What's up everybody? Today we're gonna look at fish eye drawing. Here we have a fish eye drawing by Kim Young Ji and you can actually see that all the lines which are normally straight are curved. And that is exactly why it's called a curve linear perspective. Now you might have heard of curved linear, wide angle, fish eye, and you're wondering what's the difference between all these things? Well, actually there isn't. They all mean this. Just like in the drawing by Kim Young Ji, you can see the lines of the wall, the ceiling are all curved. There are rarely any straight lines. So if we want to be precise, a curved linear perspective refers to this and the wide angle lens refers to this. Now, if you want to see a curved linear perspective, you use a wide angle lens. And the fisheye lens refers to this because that's how fish see. The biggest tip that I can give you about drawing in a curved linear perspective is to start big. Don't start with the details and then add different elements to your drawing. Start big. Envision the grid and make sure you know where the ceiling, the floor, the ground, the walls, everything is. And then you place in all the different objects. Measure the distance between them and then add the details. The biggest difference between these two drawings can be seen in the middle section, here and here. In the right drawing we're actually looking onto things almost everywhere. But in the left drawing there's a bigger difference between the angle of the objects. An example is the box. Here we're looking at the side of the box, but not so much on the other underside. While here we're really looking at the underside of the box. And that's because it's above the horizon line. When something is above the horizon line, for example, your ceiling, you're looking onto the ceiling. And that also happens over here with the table. Here we're looking more onto the table, while here we're looking more to the side of the table, this part. Now in a five point perspective, there's a bigger difference between the angle of objects. And an object that really shows that is the glass in the drawing. Here we're really looking onto this side of the glass. While here we're looking more to the side view of the glass. But when you're sitting on a table and you have a glass next to you, you can actually see inside the glass. Only when it's further away, then you're looking to the side of the glass. When you look at these images, you might think that they all require the same skill level, but that's not the case. And that's because of the amount of imagination used for drawing these scenes. The right drawing, for example, is drawn fully from imagination, but the left two drawings are drawn from viewpoint, in which he just adds a couple of elements which are from his imagination. So in the left drawing, you can see a skull on the table, and in the middle drawing, you can actually see a sex scene or it's not from imagination, people are having sex next to him, I don't know, but he's adding more imagination. Now for all you starting artists out there who wanna become better at drawing from your imagination, don't focus on imagination because that's a whole different subject. In this video, I'm explaining you how to draw from a five point perspective. Now to get better at five point perspective, just get used on drawing in this grid. Just be sure to make that grid into a drawing and then draw what you see. If you're capable of drawing a POV drawing, then you're already a pretty good drawer and you can call yourself an advanced artist. If you can add imaginary elements, then you're really becoming a great sensei. And if you can do scenes fully from your imagination, then you're just epic. It's over 9,000! And the point of view drawing can be drawn nearly anywhere. Whether it's your living room, 
your bedroom, your bathroom, or your toilet, it doesn't really matter. Just pick a point where you're sitting and draw the stuff around you. Now, I've done tons of these drawings, so I can put the camera behind me, but still, you can see some sketch marks of the grid that I'm using. Although I really see the grid while I'm drawing, and I remember where the vanishing points are, it's always easier to just have a clue of where they are approximately. And the thing you have to keep doing the whole time is measuring. Understand where your vanishing points are, where is the couch running through or other elements in the drawing. Where are things in the drawing going towards? What vanishing points do you have to keep in mind to measure towards? Now if you feel comfortable in drawing something like this then slowly you can add imaginary elements like you see over here. And that's it. Thanks guys for watching. If you liked the video, like and subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments below because I'm always curious what you guys think. And I take those things in consideration making my next video. But for now, have an awesome day and keep drawing. Adios.